Welcome back. It is A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Search Locked On Sports Atlanta. Happy Monday to everybody. Hope you had a great, wonderful weekend. I hope everybody had a wonderful Mother's Day. To all the moms out there, thank you so much for all that you do. We couldn't do it without you. And we know the most important title that you guys own is mom. So thank you so much for everything. Thank you to my mother and uh, and my wife for all that they have done for me. Uh, mom, Amanda, you guys are the best. Love you. And certainly appreciate everything that you guys have done. All right. Um, I want to spend some time here on the Kentucky Derby. And if you're not a fan of horse racing and you don't care, please listen, like, because this gets interesting. It really does. I, I know that not everybody loves horse racing, but everybody loves the Triple Crown races and they get into them and they watch them and they wager on them and they're fun. But I want to sort of break down the equivalent of what happened in that race so that people can understand it uh, and, and really get an appreciation for this long shot, rich strike that came out of nowhere to win the Kentucky Derby. So Epicenter was the favorite, and Zandon was the second or third favorite uh, at post time in this race. Epicenter was the horse that I bet on. Epicenter was the one that I had to take it on to win, and uh, I would, thought I was sitting pretty at the top of the stretch. Uh, and so if you know anything about horse racing, as they come out of that final turn, it isn't uncommon for – Jockeys for their to take their horses wide and not stay close to the rail. Generally, staying close to the rail means you have a shorter distance to run, right? It's actually just like a regular track that you would run on that you see in the Olympics, why they have the outside lane starting a little bit further ahead of the inside because they're physically running a wider distance. So um, it's, it's very common for them to want to stay on the rail. But as they get into the turn and they know it's a final straightaway, they can go wide and get the horse away from other horses and allow it to run free and not be next to anybody uh, and take off. And so that's what Epicenter did. And then jockey Joel Rosario on top of Epicenter, when he got to the top of the stretch, gave the horse a little nudge, and he jumped out to a two-length lead over a horse to its left. I don't know which one it was. I'd have to go back and double-check, but I know Zandon was on its right. And the horse to the left had dropped so far back that he was clearly out of the picture and was not a contender in the race anymore. But Zandon was about a half length behind, three quarters of a length behind, and charging on the outside. Now, when he opens up that two-length lead, Rich Strike, the horse that wins the race, is literally sitting in 11th place. There are 10 horses in front of him at the top of the stretch that he's got to make up in the final four furlongs, which is an eighth of a mile. Um, you know, and basically the last half mile is what he's got to make up, right? Uh, and he's in... 11th place. He makes an initial burst. Okay. And what happens is as they come out of the turn, everybody goes wide. And so what happens is the rail opens up and Rich Strike runs right for it. And then there was another horse. And I think it was the one that was fading back that tried to stay close to the rail that caused Rich Strike to pause for a second and have to go around him. And when this horse and this jockey paused, it hit another gear to get out of it. Now, Joel Rosario, the, the jockey on Epicenter, kept looking back into his right, back into his right, kind of like the Zapruder film, but different, <laughs> you know, looking back to his right because that's where Zandon was and he wanted to see how close the horse was and how much more he needed to give Epicenter to see if it needed to push harder to get to the finish line and win the race. What he never did was look to his left where Rich Strike was coming up fast. And if you ask me, I think... Epicenter didn't lose the race. Joel Rosario lost the race because it's the jockey's job to look around and know where everybody is on the track and know where the other most competitive horses on the track are. And they get, they get, they, they're talked to about this before the race. Look out for this horse on the rail. Look out for this horse. He's got the speed. This horse will push down the stretch. They know all this stuff. They study film on it all. Like they, they don't just go out there and jump on a horse and ride guys. There's, there's a lot that goes into this. So Rosario's job is to know where every other horse is at that point in time and who's going to challenge and where they're coming from. And he's got to know that if he's driving in the center of the track and he's looking to his right for one guy, he needs to check to his left to see what is going on closer to the rail where most horses and most jockeys generally like to run because it is a shorter distance. He never does that. Never sees Rich Strike, blows right by him, and wins the thing. Now, in fairness to Joel Rosario, he probably never thought to look to his left and never thought of Rich Strike because he was never a horse he needed to be concerned about, period. 
It's just not anything you could have predicted. It's not anything that anybody would have even thought of saying. You know, it, it's it, it, it's similar to like in the NFL, if they were to put a punter out at wide receiver, it's like, I'm not even going to go look over there. There's no reason for me to look over there. This guy isn't going to do anything. It's when a quarterback, like, you know, lines up all the way out when they run the Wildcat. Oh, just leave him there. He, that, there's nothing going to happen with that guy over there. So there was no reason for him to assume that anybody was coming up on his left, given the distance he had to the finish line and what other horses were in the field. That's what made this thing so phenomenal, so unpredictable, was simply just that Rich Strike was never supposed to be there at all, period. Now, if you're into the gambling sort of thing, uh, and, and I'm not sure if you guys know the term, so I'll, I'll, I'll lay them out for the exacta is the finish of the one, the first horse and the second horse in the race, you know, one, two order. The trifecta, obviously, is one, two, three. The superfecta is in order one, two, three, four. For a $2 exacta bet, so all you had to do is put down $2 and pick 21 and three. 21 to win, three to finish second. Those are the horses. Rich Dyke was 21, three was epicenter. If you put down $2 and you walk back and said, give me that ticket, and it said 21 and three on When you walk back to the window, they handed you $4,100 in cash. That's called a good payout. It's called a really good payout. If you had the trifecta of Rich Strike, Epicenter, and Zandon on a $1 wager, $1 wager, all you had to do is put one down, one, one U.S. dollar down on that wager, they would have handed you back $14,780 for one buck. You ready for this? And this is where it gets really fun. If you put a $1 wager down on the Superfecta, meaning you figured out the all four, the first four horses all in a row, and you put them down, and you walk back to the ticket with walk back to the window with that ticket for a one dollar investment, you got paid three hundred and twenty one thousand five hundred dollars on a one dollar investment. That's how long of a long shot this was. So, um, to put that in context, you know, I hope that really just you know makes it clear for everybody. And I'll say this much, and I genuinely mean it. I don't care what the lotto jackpot is. It could be fifty million dollars. It could be a hundred million dollars. I'd rather hit that superfecta. I would be so much more proud of myself if I hit that superfecta than hitting a lotto. Like, lotto's just luck, right? And you can say, well, the horse racing is luck. Yeah, it is, but still. Like, I'd rather guess the four horses right on a $1 ticket than hit lotto. That's just me. Because the feeling of winning and knowing that you did it right is so much better. It really is. So that's my horse racing spiel. I'm done. I hope you guys sat through that with me and certainly enjoyed it. If you ever want to talk horse racing, please hit me up on Twitter at Mark Zeno. Of course, hit us up on Locked On Sports Atlanta at Locked On ATL. Thank you guys so much for making A to Z your first listen every day. Make your next listen. Hitting hard with John Chuckery, the ATL Sports Talker, giving you all the strongest sports opinions right here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. A to Z, hitting hard with John Chuckery, and the rest of our shows are absolutely outstanding. Thank you guys so much for being part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. Follow us on YouTube. Give us a like and subscribe as well. And we'll be back tomorrow for another edition of A to Z. You guys have a great day. Don't take any crap from anybody. See you.